Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Terra Tech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to our little scalp line, now going to our brand new home, according to the polls which is the Flat Rock. Now this was easily the closest poll I have ever posted on YouTube, winning by less than 0.1% at the time of starting this recording. It has gone back and forth and I had decided by 3pm today, which is the time I'm recording now, whichever was winning, even if it was by only one vote, would be our brand new home and so here we are at the Flat Rock, but a lot of people have also told me that apparently there is an entire desert temple which you can find in the desert biome. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a tiny little runway over at the Flat Rock, add all of the basic base stuff, and then once we're done, we're going to go hunting for the temple to see if maybe that would be a better base. All in all, we need to find somewhere we are happy with in the long term. And that was, a, that was a pretty decent landing, at least it was for me. As long as I don't mess it up, okay, the UI being a bit weird there. Let's just put down something so I don't keep on moving backwards. That will do a fixed anchor just so I can land. Fantastic. And then let's put down one of these, which I'll go into in just a moment. Okay, let's get building on top of this rock until we go hunting for the Desert Temple. And so goes down our first proper anchor. Okay, so from now on, everything is going to be built off of this, or at least the main runway is. Now, a lot of people have warned me that apparently techs do not like being on top of other techs. But we're going to try anyway, and if it does turn out to be absolutely awful, it's still going to look interesting, at very least. Which, of course, is the important thing in any build when it comes to Terratex. So, how long do we want this? Honestly, as long as we can have it, maybe like that, maybe a little bit further. But for now, let's leave it like that and continue building along the side until we have a nice section in which we can try to land. And then... We're going to try to land on it and see just how bad tech-on-tech tech action really is. Boy, that sounded weirder that out loud than it did in my head. Okay, so I've got to admit, that looks really, really, really boring. So what we're going to do is scrap all of that in our lovely black hole generator over here, and we're going to do something else. So what if we use these instead and have the lovely yellow blocks there connected by a series of GSO blocks. Give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more depth. Ultimately, make it look prettier. Let's make this thing look beautiful. Yes, that looks so much better with such a simple change. And actually, I wonder, can we use these as like a rudimentary fence? Oh, we so totally could. Okay, so this is going to be the end of the runway then. Let's put all of these down, which is actually pretty important since techs tend to slide horribly even on rather flat surfaces. So I can only imagine on another tech, they're going to be moving constantly. So let's put these along here. Then we'll also put some along the front. And then that way, what we can do is when we land, we can put some behind us to lock ourselves in and then remove them when we need to move. I think that's a pretty smart idea, and actually, speaking of smart ideas, you, stay, bad, don't slide. I need you in case I need to escape. There it goes, sliding off just as I put that down. Do we have any more fixed anchors? Yes, we do. Okay, put that there. Now, are you going to be a good boy and stay? I'll take that as a yes. Back to building the runway. Annoyingly, I've just figured something out. If I flip these blocks, that line looks really, really cool. But that does mean redoing this entire line over here. I think it's worth it for the sake of aesthetics, even though I'm not someone who builds particularly pretty craft. At least we can make our runway the most beautiful runway of all TerraTech. Needless to say, this is the only runway in this particular world of TerraTech. But even so, the point stands. Landing on another tech, test one. 
Okay, that was honestly kind of bizarre. It landed instantly and then stopped. Oh. We're not classed as landed. We are currently classed as still flying. But on the upside, we are completely stuck to the landing gear. Which means what we should do is build a second set of uh, runway which goes along this way, that way we can land on it and then take off. Because right now, the only way to take off would be to go forwards because we're still classed as flying and well, that's going to happen every single time. But actually, that's not too bad. That's not terrible, actually. And we could even land this way. If we can't do that due to size limitations, we could always try to land like that, perhaps a bit more gracefully, depending on how we build it. Well, now we know what to do, we can get to work fixing it. But yeah, tech on tech landing, not the most graceful. On the upside, what we could do is convert this section here into a section for our helicopters. And honestly, I do want to make a Venture VTOL in the future, which would be perfect for this section. And I also want to make a tiny little Hawkeye helicopter, or perhaps a tiny Venture helicopter, depending on which one is more efficient. So we could still leave this area, just not in use for now. As, well, the plane kind of sticks to it, and we need a way to get in and out nice and easily. So I was about to start the midsection of our new section of runway, and the word section is now sounding very weird, but instead of just using the regular blocks, I think it's about time we start using the weird blocks. The blocks here, the special blocks in fact, that's exactly what they're called. So we do have the flesh tone block, which looks very very white, in addition to the actual white block, the black block, and all sorts of other colours. And we do have the very, very weird stuff down here as well. For instance, Jack's Septic Eye. I'm sure no one gets that reference at all. But either way, lots of stuff we could very, very easily use, especially to make it look a little bit better. I'm actually tempted to replace all of the yellow blocks here with the black blocks, and then have the white blocks replacing every second of the GSO blocks, thus making it look like a proper runway. I am very very tempted. These are also incredibly cheap, so it wouldn't be too bad to even do. Oh, the temptation. Okay, we'll do that. We'll see how it looks. And if it looks terrible, we'll just revert it, because this is going to look incredibly dark. And there isn't really a dark grey. The best we have is this, and that's honestly just GSO grey. Yeah, that definitely looks a lot better, a lot more uniform, and a lot more obvious. I'm just hoping that landing on this has the same effect as landing on these blocks over here. I can't imagine any difference, but really, it's very possible that could be the case. So what I'm going to do is increase the width a little bit, perhaps by one, maybe two more, then add the white stripes, then add some lighting to the middle and some lighting to this fence, and then continue with the black blocks until I get all the way to the other side, in which I'll finish off with the GSO once again, making it all nice, neat, uniform, and hopefully wide enough that we don't crash. That would be rather nice. Well, we've hit a very slight snag in the fact the white blocks are almost luminescent white. They look honestly absolutely terrible. So, let's have a quick look at the other colours to see if they will do a better job of lighting our way, or at least showing our way. So the next one is the darker of the flesh tones. And that just looks a bit sickly, to be honest, when it comes to block form. Don't really want a nice fleshy block there. And the other flesh tone looks almost just as bad. So, a little bit of a snag in that none of the lighter colours actually look decent. What we could do, and it's a little bit boring, but I think it will indeed work, is if we go with the GSO, we could easily do this. Yeah, that looks so much better, just having the stripe there. So maybe going with this instead might be the better option. Which is a real shame, because I was hoping to make it almost completely out of the special blocks, but that's just such a bright block, it's ridiculous. Kinda looks like enamel. That's really creepy, the more I think about it, the more I don't like it. 
So sadly, when we were building just then, we actually managed to hit the build limit. We were so far out, we couldn't build any more, and because of that, we couldn't finish the runway. However, I took that as a good sign that we should try to build a little bit different, a little bit more... I don't know the right word. It looks like it's got a foundation, a bit more secure, I suppose. And here we are with try number two. So, I'll just skip ahead a few moments, and and then we'll have our working uh, runway, that's the word I was looking for, and then we'll go off into the sunset trying to find the hidden base known as the Temple. And so the main segment of the runway is complete. So before we add the fence segment to the other side and we add some generators and such underneath, perhaps a repair bubble just to make sure when the planes land they can heal themselves, I just need to make sure this is actually wide enough. In the last build, we almost hit the build limit, which apparently is 64 by 64 by 64. We didn't quite hit it, but since I do have a few plans and schemes, with this section back here, we were getting dangerously close to that. So this time, we are far closer to the rock and everything looks very, very nice indeed. So let's just jump on over to here, put down our cab, and let's see if the plane can actually land. I do have a bit of skepticism. It looks like I may have built it a little bit too small. We will very, very soon find out. Okay, in the air we go. So let's just make a quick, a quick loop and then try to land. And let's see if we are a good size and landing. A little bit of a bumpy landing, but a landing nonetheless. So, are we still counted as flying? Yes, we are, which is absolutely fantastic, because it means it won't cause us to change our control scheme when we actually get into the air. So right now, we are slowly sliding, so to fix this, what I'm going to do is have a series of the Hawkeye blocks, which we can simply move and put down on the runway itself to essentially secure us, which actually makes quite a bit of sense. So, can I get off the track? Yes, I can. That's absolutely fine. Everything is good. And of course, once I have the fence on the other side, it will make it a lot more secure. So let's go back, let's land again, and then let's sort out the fence. Although I think maybe I should land on the rock whilst I'm doing building here, because otherwise I can see this plane falling off. This is going to be a bad landing. Oh, nope, sliding off. Okay, maybe one more try. Oh, well, maybe not. That was totally intentional. So right now, the runway is almost complete. All we need to do is add some repair bubbles underneath to make it a little bit more useful, and to add a few lights here and there to make it a little bit prettier. But once that is done, what we could do in the future is add separate runways, separate sections, each of which will allow us to have a different flying tech docked here for the future. One for the Venture plane, one for the Hawkeye plane, one for the Hawkeye bomber, and one for the Venture Helicopter I am very soon to build, which will be as small as possible. So the next step, like I was mentioning earlier, depending if I actually kept that in the video, is we need to add some repair bubbles to the underside of the runway. This way, we can do some light repairs without having to move things around. And thankfully, because of how the camera works, we can also always grab the repair bubble and simply put it closer to the craft if we so desire. But this way, we don't need to always fiddle around with the repair bubbles on the craft itself. So, let's have a quick look-see at which repair bubble is the largest. So that's the Geocorp, that's the GSO, significantly smaller. Then we have the Venture, which I believe is the smallest. Yes, indeed it is. And then the one I'm actually wondering about, how big is the Hawkeye repair bubble? Fairly good, but okay, the winner is clearly the Geocorp. Okay, then, so let's put all these back into our black hole, and then let's get building underneath. Except you. You can stay. Okay, so if we put one there, that covers that section. So, how about if the next one goes here? Well, it's not optimal, but it will look quite nice having them all a equal distance from each other as we continue to build this. So just do it like this, 
and then the only place not being covered by the repair bubble is the end. What we could do is also have them on the edge there, but that's going to be a little bit silly looking if we have that many repair bubbles. So for now, we'll just leave it as it is. There we go, you can go back. And the last thing I would like to do to the underside is to continue what I've been doing with these railing sections to make it look as if it's actually being held up, not just sort of floating there. So it's all bound together by this little railing system here, which has another word. Scaffolding system! There we go, I even managed to find the correct word. Hmm, should I do it like this? Yeah, I think this would be best, having them two down, and then going with the brackets again, then having them go along, which then can also connect to this, and then have the odd extra spike going up. I think that'll look nice. Trying to drive on another tech is absolutely horrendous. It constantly bounces you around and causes you to go in different directions. So I'm really thankful that our plane takes off so easily that we don't really need to do that that much. Also, of course, the fact that it counts as flying whilst it's on another tech is really useful, as then I can just put up all of my rudders and instantly take off. One, two, three. Okay, that is correct. I'm a little bit nervous about the placement of our cab right now, but if it does fall off, we can always just jump into one of the techs up here and make a new one. They are, after all, rather expendable. Where are you? There we are. The bracket goes there. This goes up by one. Then we use the side bracket, the corner bracket, as it's actually called. Come on. Nope. Yep, that's the one. And then the next section is all completed as soon as I attach these two together. And yes, you're going to watch me attach them. Oh, the excitement. There we are. I think that looks pretty nice, honestly. I'm actually rather happy with that. Ow. How did that not hurt me? This thing is just immortal. Oh my lord, how much stuff have I dropped? Ignore that. This seems like it's going to work fine. Alley up. Please don't hit the bottom. Yep, yeah, there we go. There we go. And grab and throw. <laughs> Will that work? Yes! Got ya. <laughs> no, 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 not again. Come on. That was one of the best plans ever. There we go. Using junk to get back up here. Nice, simple, effective, kind of pointless. Okay, so what else I've done is I've added a load of the GeoCorp batteries all to this section here, so now it can hold a lot more power, which means a lot more repair power. So, all of that looks nice and secure underneath. We have the repair bubbles, we have the ability to land and to take off, and because of how I've patterned it, if we ever need to increase the runway or add more to the sides, it will be really easy to do without breaking any of the patterns. I'm actually pretty happy with myself for this. One of the few times I'm actually happy with one of my builds. And it has took way too long though. For such a simple build, this has taken a lot of my time. So hopefully you like it too. With time now running a bit short, let's go out and let's see if we can find the massive ruins that everyone keeps on telling me about. And in true Lathrixian fashion, we're just going to go north. Just like before, we're going to go north as long as possible until we find it. Now, I've had quite a few mixed reports from people exactly what the temple looks like and where to find it. And because I hate spoilers and actually looking up stuff online as much as possible, I haven't looked it up, so from what I've been told, it's normally in the desert biome, although apparently it can also spawn somewhere else, and it's made of the same type of rock that this lovely ruins is made of. It's just much bigger and much more impressive. And that got me thinking, if we do end up being seduced by the temple, wanting to build there instead, we could still keep our little outpost over there as that, a little, a little outpost, somewhere where we can land our flyers, get repair done, and get some electricity back into our flyers themselves. Which reminds me, need to put down some of the wireless chargers all over our hangar. And by hangar, I mean runway. Lagging a little bit because we are now loading brand new space, haven't been here before, so everything's being loaded in for the first time. I'll be right back once we find something interesting. Hopefully, the ruins themselves. Oh, is this a mountain? Or is this possibly... Is it the temple? It's certainly made out of the right material. At least it looks like it. I think 
we may have found what everyone keeps on talking to me about. And if not, it's just really cool. Okay, that's got a load of flat surfaces, it's got a lot of character with all of the weathering scars, and honestly, loads of different levels. That would be amazing to build on. Hmm, a little bit small though on the top, not quite as much space as the rock, but that would be very, very stylistic. At very least, we could very, very easily build a second airbase here. So in the comments below, please tell me, what would you like me to do here? Should this be a main base, or should it be a little airbase? Well, either way, I'm going to keep on exploring, just in case this wasn't the right thing, but I certainly think it is. I mean, look at the darn thing. And if you find something else interesting, I will, of course, tell you. That was surprisingly close to our base, so it would also have the benefit of that. It's all close to the salt flats I've been building on, and close to that little airfield I'm working on. Everything is slowly coming together. Hello? What are you- Oh. You're an exact copy of the rock we just started building on. Like, seriously. Wow, it is an exact copy. It's the exact same item. Okay. Moving on. Kind of weird to see something so perfectly copied, but I guess it makes sense in a game like this. Oh, hello. Second temple. And once again... It's located between the desert and these plains, or forest, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know the name of the biome, the really basic one. Also, yes, the UI flashing is slowly driving me mad as well, but even so. Hmm. I am wondering if that is indeed the temple we're after then. Still continuing north, though. As far north as possible. And yet again, another one of these. Okay, so it does seem like this is the temple, unless I am absolutely missing one. And so our journey has came to an end. I'm going to fly back and have one more quick sweep of the area to see if there's anything unique. And then I will be right back, although by the looks of things, I have indeed found my target. And it's pretty darn cool. I've also been messing around with the graphic options and with a lot of the settings on my recording software and other stuff, and sadly, this is still happening, so definitely going to need to go to the forums to figure out just why that's occurring. I've tried pretty much everything obviously available to me, so there's clearly something I'm missing. One more flat rock. So much repetition. Well, that's curious. The issue completely goes away once I start heading back towards my original base. So maybe it's those bases causing that issue to happen, trying to load them in the distance and all their symbols, or perhaps it's having a quest so, so very far away. That is very, very interesting, but either way, whilst I'm here, I cannot cause the screen to flicker. But as soon as I go too far north and then look towards the south, the flickering happens again. So maybe what would be best is to go back, destroy my bases over here, or at least remove my techs, which are currently sitting over here, and then move everything over. That very well could be what's causing the problem, and that's something I'll do off camera. So back north yet again, and I'll go and land on our landing strip. Can we get a smooth landing? What a fantastic way to end the episode, if we can. So let's put my very poor flying skills to the test. Okay, we're going to be a little bit angled here, but here we go, trying to land before the end of the runway, and what a perfect landing! Right on the end, ready to take off at a moment's notice. I don't think I could have actually landed that more perfect, although I do have to admit, I was aiming for like there. So, a bit of an overshot, but an overshot that just went well. Well, with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Terror Tech is a series you would like to see continued in the future. In the next episode, I will either be building on the temple we found, or we are going to be adding a small section in addition to our runway in which we can harbour a very small scout 
scout helicopter or scout plane. I really want to build Tiny. I really do like this venture plane. People were a bit mixed about it in terms of its looks, but it's definitely grew on me and it will definitely be a permanent addition to our techs. Now, we need something more adorable, and for that, we need a more adorable little runway. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.